Atom Inventory, we are discussing how to balance chemical equations. Awesome. Indeed, it is awesome, Henry. I know, right? How awesome is that? Pretty awesome. So, uh, at the end of this, we should be able to tell if a, if a chemical equation is balanced. We should be able to tell if it's unbalanced. And also, we should be able to balance equations that are not yet balanced. So, uh, let's talk first about the Haber process. The Haber process is uh, this uh, scientist named Fritz Haber. He found out how to react hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas from the atmosphere to produce ammonia, which you guys may know as a popular cleaning product. But also, it's an ingredient in explosives. So this is a very interesting reaction. It was a big breakthrough in uh, chemistry, which did change the world. So uh, let's, uh, I'll pause right here, and we'll get this down. So if you look at this reaction here, notice that we have a nitrogen particle. And look up here, eyes on the board. Look on the board right now. Thank you. We have N2 gas. N2 is made of two nitrogen atoms reacting with hydrogen, H2. That's two hydrogen atoms making a particle of NH3. So you guys, look at the atoms we start with and look at the atoms we end with. Do we have the same number of each? No. no. I end with three hydrogen atoms and one nitrogen atom. I started with two of each. So that's there's something wrong with that. Debbie, come on, cut it out. So that violates the law of conservation of matter. And mass, because nitrogen and hydrogen weigh different. Nitrogen has a mass, an atomic mass of 14. Hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1. So I start out with a mass of 28 plus 2, which is 30, and I end with a mass of 17. That can't happen violates the law of conservation of matter. So what I have to think about whoops, is let's see what I have each. And I just talked about this. I have two nitrogen atoms to start and two hydrogen atoms to start. I end with one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. So this is an example of an unbalanced equation. Okay? All right. So, this is an example of an unbalanced equation. We All you have to copy down here is the bottom point. Since we don't have the same number of each atom in the products and the reactants, we consider this to be unbalanced. Okay? So this next point brings us to one of the most important points in chemistry, is understanding this process. So in order to make a balanced equation, we need to add groups of each substance until we have the same number of each element in the product and the reactant. What we have to do here, and everybody look up at the board right now. Everybody look at the board. Everybody look at the board. Okay. So what we do is we have to add more groups. You might notice on my product side, I don't have enough nitrogen atoms, do I? I have two in the reactants, but I only have one in the product. So I have to add another whole group of that atom to balance it out. So right now, my nitrogens are balanced. I have two nitrogens in my product side and two in my reactant side. But now I have too much hydrogen on my product side. I have six hydrogens on my product side, but only two in my reactant side. You guys might develop some instinct here. I have to add more hydrogens. And I add two more groups of hydrogens. So now I have a balanced equation. I have 
one, two hyd nitrogens on my product side, one, two nitrogens on my reactant side. I have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens on my product side, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens in my reactant side. So this is a balanced equation. I have the same number of each atom on both sides. Okay, so you don't write this down yet. So my balanced equation here, I have one group of nitrogen and three groups of hydrogen. And I form two groups of NH3. So my overall balanced equation is one nitrogen reacts with three hydrogens forming two NH3. So this is what you want to write down up here. So this here is our overall balanced equation. So let's, I'm going to go through a couple options right now. I'll tell you guys how I might balance the equation. Um, so let me, I'll write this down. So what we have here is I like to draw a line underneath the arrow. This is a strategy. So you guys are going to want to copy this down, both of these equations. Leave some space in between them so that you guys can write stuff down. All right, so let's do the couple different strategies for this. So, and don't make your stuff that thanks. So let's do my tally first. I like to personally, when I'm balancing an equation, I like to write all the symbols of the elements underneath the arrow. So here I have Fe, iron, and O. So those are the different elements that I have in my products and reactants. So then what I like to do is I like to do my first tally. Written up here, how many irons are in my reactant side? One. How many oxygens? Two. My product side, I have two FEs and three O's. So is this balanced or unbalanced? This is unbalanced because I have different numbers of each element in my products and my reactants. So what I can do here is I need to add different groups of these things. So what, let's pick something that's not balanced. And this one, let's start with the O's here. What numbers can I change here to make the O's balance out? And this is a good strategy. If I had six O's on each side, that would balance out, wouldn't it? How many O2's would I need to have six? I need three O2's. And how many... Fe2O3s would I need to have six O's? Two. Two. So this changes things. So now let's do a retally. How many O's do I have in my reactant side? I have three O2s. That's six. Here? Three O2s. Okay. If I have three groups of O2, that means I have six O's total. Okay. And if I have two groups with O3, how many O's is that total? That's six as well. So now I'm getting close, but notice I have two Fe2O3s. That changes my Fe's, doesn't it? So how many Fe's do I have if I have two groups of Fe2O3? I have four Fe's. So that's, that's what that changes right there. So let's get another color up here. Oh, let's get a better color. Yellow. Mm, no, we can't see yellow. Oh, green. Oh, green. We already have blue. So oh, black. how can I balance out my FEs? It's actually pretty easy. So how many do I have in my products? I need three more for a total of? Four. So if I had one, two, three, four FEs, I'm balanced. So now this is an example of a balanced equation. Because I have a total of four FEs, four ions in my products and reactants, and I have six oxygens in my products and reactants. 
Um, let's do this one real quick. Or do you guys want to try this one yourselves? Yeah, we can. Let's do it. Why don't you guys try try this one? Try to balance this one by yourselves, and then we'll go over it. I'm going to give you guys a quick hint. So when you're doing your tally, I'll start you guys off. With your tally. So when you're doing this, you have C's, H's, and O's. So in our re product side, you have O in two places. Balance the O's last in that case. Okay? So if you ever have something in multiple places, balance that last. So when we're going through this, when you're doing your tally, remember that CH here. The carbon is one element and the hydrogen is another element. We have to consider those separately. So if there's no, if there's no subscript, what number do we assume? One. We assume one. So CH4, that has one carbon and four hydrogens. How many oxygens do I have in my reactant set? Two. So in my products... How many carbons do I have in my products? I only have one. The CO2, the 2 refers to the O. If we have no co uh, subscript, that means it's, we assume it's 1. So you guys can almost think about this as C1H4 and C1O2 if you want. And o, CH2O1. So, but you, that's how, that'll, that'll be fine if you want to assume that in balancing. So let's talk about my products. How many hydrogens are in my products? Two. And now, how many oxygens? I have two here, and I have one here, so a total of three. Now, balance the oxygens in the last since they're in two places. So let's start figuring out what we can balance. One, two. So carbons are balanced right now. What can I balance? Next, let's look at my hydrogens. What, I have groups of four here on my reactants, and I have groups of two here. How can I balance out my hydrogens here? What coefficient can I put in front of here? I can put a two in front of here. Let's see what that changes. Does that change my carbons here? No. Doesn't change my carbons here. Does it change my hydrogens? Yes. So if I have two H2Os, how many H's do I have? Four. Does it change my O's? Yes. Yeah. Does it change these O's over here? No. It changed these O's over here. So I have how many O's do I have here? If I have two H2Os. Three. Three? Six. Six? If I have two H2O molecules, I have two O's, don't I? So I have two O's here and two O's here. Give me a total of how many? Four. All right. So now I'm almost done. And you guys should be able to hopefully be able to see that. And there's a simple thing I can do to my reactant side to balance out my oxygens here. What can I do? What can I put? What number can I put in front of here? Two. That changes my O's here to, if I have two groups of O2, how many O's is that? Four. Here I'm balanced. Now, if you guys, one thing that uh, you can do, which is perfectly fine with me if you want, is you guys can write in your ones. So, if you don't write anything, one is understood. But if you want to write in your one as a coefficient in front there, that's perfectly fine. Okay? 